Duval County Jail. We're going to start with the outside of the building. To begin with, this thing is shaped like a pair of handcuffs. I'm talking about it's got two towers that are shaped like rings. And then it's got a centerpiece in the middle where it's got the elevator shaft, all the officer stations. That's the exterior of the building. So picture just a humongous 10 story high pair of handcuffs. Yeah, let that one sink in. Now, when you first get into Duval County Jail, you're going to come in through a sally port. They're going to get you out of the cop car. They're going to walk you through a set of doors where they're going to pat you down. You're going to pat you down, take all of your contraband, because most people that are coming to jail got some type of contraband on them. So once they take that, they're going to walk you around, escort you around the corner, tell you to change out of your personal clothes and put on the jail uniform. Yeah, a green uniform. And if you are a check-in, guess what they're going to give you? An orange uniform where they're going to send your ass to the pumpkin patch where you're on lockdown by yourself. There's some of them people too now. Now, you're going to work your way around the bottom floor. As you're going, you're going to be going from holding cell to holding cell. You're going to get your pictures taken. You're going to get your fingerprints taken. You're going to go through classification. And then they're going to determine what floor they're going to put you on. And that has a lot to do with what type of charge you have. So for me, immediately I'm shot to the fifth floor, five east. Five east is where all the heavy hitters, all the people that's got big, heavy, life sentence type of charges, they're all going to the fifth floor. Now, as you work your way, you know, once you're in the county jail for a little while, you might go down to the fourth or the third floor. Um, but in fact, I think the fourth floor might be one of the either the fourth or the third floor might be for people that are sentenced and they're getting shipped up out of the county jail. But either way, you end up getting moved around. But for me, I went straight to the fifth floor and all of the floors are pretty much the same after you get off the bottom floor. So when you get off the elevator, you're going to be facing an officer station. Depending if they send you to the west side or the east side, you're going to go left or right. Now, as soon as you go left, you're going to go around, walk around the officer station. You're going to see the visitation room where you sit on one side of the glass and your visitors sit on another side of the glass and you talk on the telephone. Now, once you pass that, you're going to go down the hallway to another officer station and each floor has got an officer station in the middle, one down at this end and one down at this end. And when you get down to this end, you're going to hand them your piece of paper. They're going to take the paper, see where you're at, and they're going to tell you, all right, walk through this door, go into the dorm. This thing's like a gigantic fishbowl. So you got one, two, three, four quads around an officer station. The officer station being right in the middle, they got plexiglass all around it so they can see in all of the quads. And then all the quads, the front windows are made of plexiglass so that officers can see directly through, right? But trust me this, when you get into Duval County Jail and they say you're going in five east, one or two or three or four, and you walk through this door, when they pop that door, they hit the buzzer and you enter into the dorm, one thing the officers are not doing is watching. They don't give a damn what's popping off in that dorm until it gets to a point where it's just completely out of control and it gets out of control all the damn time in Duval County Jail. That's real. Now, this situation that I'm telling you guys about happened in 5 East. I think it was 5 East too. And it was the dorm that I was actually in. So. Once you get in there, there's about 50, 60, maybe 70 people, depending on how packed it is. And it's just a big open dorm, two floors. So you got cells on the bottom, a shower in the middle, cells above that, and they're all two man cells. They used to be, I heard that they've now welded another bunk and made it three man cells. So not sure on the exact numbers, but when you walk in here, you can just feel the tension in the air. Oil, Everybody in the dorms are looking at you when you walk in. They're looking at you, trying to read you, seeing how you walk, seeing if you walk with fear, seeing if you're looking like, oh man, like a deer in headlights. <laughs> Listen, off top, number one, you gotta come in here with confidence. You gotta come in here as a man. You gotta come in here and act like you know exactly what you're doing or you're about to be taken severe advantage of right off top. And once that happens, if you fold, if you are flimsy, this shit's gonna go down every day. So, here it is, I'm in 5 East 2. And at this point, I had been in there for a while, got to know everybody that was in there. You know, it is a revolving door where a lot of people come and go, but there's always a group of people that have been in there for a while. 
And while I was in this dorm, there was this young dude named Jamie, white guy. He's about, beside me, he's like about this tall, five, six. Little short dude, right? He plays nonstop. I'm talking about the type of playing where he's all up in your face, getting all up beside you, touching on you, trying to wrestle with you, trying to aggravate the shit out of you. He's just always a constant bundle of just rah, 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 just crazy shit, right? <laughs> Some people don't play well when people want to play like that and they don't want to play. And there was another cat that was in the dorm named Frank. I'm going to give you a couple of the people's names so that you can um, understand who I'm talking about while I'm telling you this story. Off top, immediately, Jamie and Frank do not hit it off. And Frank, for most people that just see Frank, they just see that he's an older white guy in his mid-40s. He's bald on top. He's kind of a little bit, you know, buffed up a little bit, but he ain't looking like he's just knocking people out. That's real. But... Everybody that thinks that when they see Frank, they get it wrong because this dude's knocking people out. This dude's beating people's ass. I only seen this one altercation where he didn't win. And it's going to be in this story that I'm telling you right here. So on this situation, on this day, when they got into this fight, it was all white guys. So it was Jamie. It was Frank. And there was one black guy. I can't remember his name. Real tall dude. Um, another real tall white guy. I don't remember his name. So it was like four, maybe five people. All of the guys were drinking Buck this day. And they just so happened to be drinking it in my room because my room was up in the corner. In fact, my roommate was one of the guys. <laughs> I forgot about that. He was one of the guys. Um, so they're drinking in my room, right? They're hanging out up there. My room's up in the corner where the officer cannot see in that room at all. They got to actually get up come out of the officer station and look up in that corner. So it's a perfect place to do whatever it is that people want to do that they don't want the officer to see what they're doing, right? Now, on this, Jamie's already wild, already up in your face, already just causing problems with people all the damn time. And Frank used to tell him, man, stay away from me with that bullshit. I don't like you. I don't mess with you. We ain't going to hang out. We ain't cool. Frank told him just straight up. That's how Frank was, straight to the point. But... Now, here it is, they're drinking this buck, and Jamie, he's not thinking straight. <laughs> so, I remember we're down here on the railing, we're like leaning against the railing. This is a real tall rail in the dorm, so you could be upstairs leaning over the railing, looking around the dorm, seeing what's going on, just chopping it up, talking. And it's me and Frank standing here, right? So, I remember Jamie comes down here, and as he's walking down the rail, you can see him, he's walking down the catwalk, I mean, you can see he's just walking kind of cocky, like... <laughs> It's just, what is this dude up to? So he comes over here and he actually swings at Frank. Now he didn't swing at him and try to hit him. He just swung and put his fist right by his face. And Frank told him, he said, man, if you do that again, I'm going to knock you out. And Jamie's like, what? And he swung at him again. <laughs> when he swung at him, Frank hit him. Boom! I'm talking about, he fired on him. I'm talking about most people getting hit when Frank hit him fight's over with but when he hit Jamie he rocked his ass knocked him backwards but Jamie's like oh no <laughs> he was a tough dude he did play a lot but he was actually a tough cat been getting locked up his entire life been fighting his entire life but he doesn't have the size that Frank has so he comes back at him now what you got to realize why this turned into the craziest wildest fight that I had seen in the Duval County Jail was because all of these guys that were drinking Buck, they had made a pact that day that, look, if anything pops off, we ride together, no matter what. And they did. So, now let me back it up a little bit because when Jamie was actually swinging at Frank and I seen Frank tell him, listen, man, stop. If you do it again, I'm going to knock you out. I actually tried to step in between them and I kind of like held my leg up in between them. It was like, man, go on, go, go chill, man. Go hang out. Go back down to the room. And he's like, ah, da, da, da. So there wasn't, at some point, I'm not going to get in between them and be like, ah, like this. You know, they're, they're men. So I couldn't stop them. They get into it. Next thing you know, all these dudes, even though they were friends with Frank, they come up out of the cell. And they're like, hey, man, what's up? And these dudes are bam, bam, bam. They're banging. But Frank's banging his ass and backing him up. And he hits him with this one right, bam. And when he hits him, 
I just seen his eyes roll back. Now, they've been going at it for a few seconds now, but when his eyes roll back, he falls straight backwards. And this is one of the most gruesome, oh God. When this dude fell backwards, he hits it. There's a piece of steel down at the bottom of the, um, the railing in Duval County Jail. In fact, a lot of times when you're standing on the railing, you just put your feet up on the, the little plate still. Jamie fell directly backwards and hits the back of his head right on. I've seen this happen two times. It happened in prison once. But this one, I was standing right here. And when he fell backwards, boom, right on that piece of steel, it split the back of his head wide open and blood is just gushing out. And I'm like, oh my God, he might have killed him because he's out cold. He's not moving none. And there's just a massive amount of blood just coming out of his head. The blood rolling over, uh, pouring over, like off of the catwalk downstairs. And all these dudes come out of the cell and they're like, what? Oh, da, da, da. So now they're like, oh, no, they're, they're headed to get Frank. And Frank takes off and he goes downstairs. Man, when he went downstairs, they all just started pop, 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 banging on his ass, right? But then somebody, one of the dudes, I'm not sure exactly, I think it was the black dude. So one of the dudes got the pair of scissors that I had. Somebody stole a pair of scissors from the medical uh, facility in the Duval County Jail. Gave me the scissors because I was the one that cut hair in the dorm. And there were a little pair of just silver uh, medical scissors, but they're very sharp. They got a real sharp tip. The dude ended up with my scissors. And while they're fighting, he hits Frank with a boom, but he hits him right in the mouth. And the scissors stab through his mouth. Man, this is so gruesome. I'm like, oh my God, it was just crazy seeing the scissors hit him and it stabs through his mouth, all the way through his mouth. And they are just on Frank, pounding him, pounding. Frank's fighting back. There's just blood going everywhere. Frank's whole face is just smashed, swole up. This shit was crazy, man. It was absolutely insane. And the whole time up here, I'm up here with uh, Jamie, the dude that got knocked out, and he has just lost a massive amount of blood. And he started to wake up and I remember he's like squirming around like anybody else that gets knocked out like what just happened and they're trying to figure out what happened but while he's trying to squirm around there's a lot of blood on the catwalk up here and he's just like slipping and sliding I'm like bro you're done you're toast <laughs> chill it ain't no more but he's trying to get up and keep fighting once he wakes up and he's like oh man good. what I just got knocked out <laughs> he's like where's he at I'm like man you got no more fight left in you so finally the police are like, oh, all right, maybe we should go in here and see what's going on. I mean, there's blood all over the dorm. There's massive amount of people that are just like out here watching what's going on. There's like four dudes that have jumped on Frank and it's just craziness, right? So the cops come in, they break it all up. They start taking people out of the dorm. And here's the crazy part. They took Jamie out of the dorm. And by this point, he is lit, he's hot, he's super mad. I'm talking about he is just snapping, still wanting to fight and the police are trying to restrain him. I'm gonna tell the whole story about this in the next in another video, but they end up putting him in the buck chair. I don't know if you guys know what the buck chair is, but it's a chair that they strap you in and you're sitting in a sitting position, down low to the ground, just like all the way on the ground, and you're just sitting here and they put these seat belts around you that they ratchet, they click it tight around you, right? So you're strapped in, you can't get out of the chair. He is the only person I ever seen get up out of the chair and when he did it was all bad <laughs> so i'll tell you guys more about the buck chair because i got a couple buck chair stories for you guys in another video but with that i greatly appreciate you guys watching the video hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a comment and if you haven't done it hit the subscribe button 